You know arugula? It is a vegetable. Yeah. Okay. Arugula is a peppery herb salad kind of green. Well, in England, they call it rocket, but I'm pretty sure that's just an anglicized version of the French, who I think call it roquette. You remember how we were worried about this show being too boring? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Three Guys, Three Questions, where three friends test the limit of propriety through the questions we ask. Today is in the books. This week, we're sponsored by the Dewey Decimal System. I'm Aaron L.M. Goodwin, and I'm joined, as always, by Andrew Savage. Say hello, Andrew. I can't. It's in the library. I gotta be quiet. Oh, shh. This is the whispering episode. I'm, all, I'm, also, I'm also joined by Adam Musty Vellum Anderson. Hey, guys. Hi. Uh, old book smell that you enjoy but only in books and not on people mm-hmm. i enjoy them people um have ooh, you ever smelled okay. someone that's like oh that's a good book <laughs> <laughs> you ever gone up to somebody go, you smell like a good book i'd like to read you sometime Whoa. Whoa. I'd, like to, I'd like to read you in bed <laughs> little nightlight If you're new to the show, here's how it works. Each host asks a question, then each host gives their answer. Hilarity hopefully ensues, and we move to the next question. I have today's first question, so take it away, me. Oh, I will. Thank you, me. Oh, you're very welcome, me. My question is... (laughs) (laughs) No, I'm not going to even mention that happening. I'm leaving it in. What book do you pretend to have read... Um, I have a, a, a clarification question for this, which I know always goes well. If you so help me, if you say you never pretend to have re- read a book, I'm going <laughs> to punch you in your nuggets. Okay, well, you should be really happy with this clarification question because it's actually the exact opposite. In what context? <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what do you mean? Like a book report context or like yeah, you tell so people you I read mean, it? I mean, most recently... I've pretended to read a book called Purple Hibiscus. Um, oh, for okay. Let's were, say let's not for class. For, like let's that, say I mean, in social class. conversation. Actually, most of the books for class I pretend to have read for most of the year. Oh, whoa. And then eventually, at the end of the year, I'm like, oh yeah, I like this one. And then I'll I hope it. nobody's listening to this. They might take away your degree. <laughs> that's how it works, right? Actually, one time, fun story. Look, I'll be the judge of that. I, I presented a paper at a at an English symposium. On a Shakespeare play that I had only read half of. Oh, man. Adulthood is going to be really good for you. (laughs) So if anybody's the king of pretending to have read things that they haven't, I think it's me. Good old English major. Okay, let's not do academic or work related. (laughs) Because I could go on all day about that. So let's say social. Um, That's not even my question, but I'm taking it. (laughs) So socially. I just want an answer. It's been like 10 minutes and we haven't even talked about your answer. I have given several answers already. (laughs) What's the answer? Um, so socially, I think I pretend um, pretty much just everything that's on my bookshelf. Like I've read most of the books on my bookshelf, but there's a couple that are like nonfiction books about psychology. I think one of them is just called How We Decide, and there's a picture of a of an ice cream cone on it. I have that book too. So yeah. I was given that book for free. So it must be really good. And like all the time people, people will be browsing my books and it's all fiction and so they don't like it. Because they're cooler than me, I guess. And then they'll they'll come to they'll come to that book or or its companion book. Uh, I am a strange loop, and they're like, "Oh, is this good?" And I'm like, "Yeah, sure, totally, it's great." It's by Jonah Lair. Yeah, and then they're like, "Hey, can I borrow it?" And I'm like, "No." So I'm still reading it. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna say, "Oh, okay, yeah, huh?" I got that book because there was a website called Get Glue, which was a social network where you would track the media you consume. And then they would use it to sell you out to marketers or people like that who would send you free things. It was interesting. It worked well until they just they realized this is not profitable. <laughs> but I got all kinds of free stuff out of it. That's neat. That was fun. Anybody anybody on Get Glue? No? Okay. Um, Are, dude, I remember is your that. username also Aaron L M Goodwin on, Gl- <laughs> on Get Glue? Dude, so I have a problem with Get Glue. Yeah. I they had the free stickers. I ordered the stickers. Never got the stickers. They never came. Nope, never got them. Messed, messed up. I was so upset. Mm, yeah. Um. What are we talking about again? <laughs> the, the books that we've pretended to read. Yeah. Adam pretends to read nonfiction. 
Yeah. Do you not read nonfiction? Not a lot. No, not usually. Adam can Adam can you read? <laughs> is that the big <laughs> is that the big ruse? Yeah. I am an English major who can't read. Turns out he can't read. Actually, of all the majors who would like who would be like best to not read, I think English major, at least just in class, would be the best one because it's all discussion based. Mm. So you can you can you can pull the wool over some people's eyes. You're you're just endorsing so much BS. Um, <laughs> you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to write the papers though. That's for I sure. read mostly nonfiction. That's so weird to me. I read some fiction, but I'm I, I like there's just something for me where I feel I I'm not saying I think this, but I feel this. Okay. Yeah. But inside, I feel like I'm wasting time mm. by reading fiction. When there's so much knowledge I could be acquiring. Knowledge. Um, so yeah, no, I can see that. I, I, think, I think we just have different philosophies about what reading is for. No, I, I have the same philosophy. It's just... No, no, no. I mean, hear me out. Because when I read, I read to escape. And so I think that's why I usually go for fiction. But it sounds like you read, you read to connect to the world and I read to escape. Yeah, okay. It. That makes sense. Do, do, I, you, do you guys hear that? That's all of our listeners leaving. <laughs> first, first question. Andrew, what's your answer to this really boring question? Hey, so um, <laughs> my answer is semi-relevant, mm-hmm. but I've never read an Animorphs book. <gasps> <laughs> Me either. Here's the reason why. I was totally a Goosebumps kid. You can't do both. But, but Andrew, it's not an either or thing. No, it you don't is. understand. It it's is. like it's like Oreos and Hydrox, <laughs> and really? Animorphs is the Hydrox. Yeah. Um. So the thing is, it was Actually, like, wouldn't Goosebumps be the Hydrox? Because Goosebumps came first. What? Didn't they? Uh, I don't know. You're saying Hydrox came before Oreos? Yeah, yes, Hydrox did. came before Oreos, and then everybody latched on to Oreos. Oreos is a copy of Hydrox. All I know is Oreos are better. Yes, <laughs> everyone knows that. Goosebumps is better, so that's how it's working for me. So. I don't know if it was this way in your elementary school, but there were factions. There were gangs. It was like West Side Story, <laughs> but it was depending on what fan of books you read. And I was a Goosebumps kid. I didn't have time for any of that turning the animals junk. I had like ghosts and things to read about. <laughs> I So you got, yeah, Animorphs and, and your, your Goosebumpers and whatever. Those are like not, those are after my time. So like. When I was growing up, there wasn't any sort of really popular kids book series. Was that... yours the like the Babysitters Club or the <laughs> Butter Churn Gang? Uh, the what is it the the Boxcar Kids or yeah the uh, Boxcar Kids or yeah. um it was you know what like we were all just OG and we all read two two book series and we never fought about them. The first was anything by Beverly Clary or the Hardy Boys, right? No, I'm, oh, <laughs> I'm not that old. Anything by Beverly Cleary, because she's legit. Second is uh, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. Oh, that's a really good one. And that's like when people talk about Goosebumps was scary. I was like, fool, in third grade, I was reading (laughs) stories about freaking uh, spiders coming out of a corpse. Yeah, no. That's how we we rolled. So, oh, my my little Goosebumps is scary. There's a mummy. Oh, no. Come on. I read a Choose Your Own Adventure Goosebumps book. Those weren't as um, good. I went into it with the assumption that there was a right answer, but I'm pretty sure all of the paths led to me falling down a pit and dying. So <laughs> Just like I got really life. frustrated. Just like this question. Um, <laughs> so, so my answer is I pretend to have read 1984. But let me clarify. I pretend to have read all of 1984. <laughs> <laughs> I Did I you read... also just get halfway through and like, oh, this is not worth my time. I, yeah, I was going to yeah. say, you and everybody who has ever commented on the internet. Has <laughs> I, read I read like half of it and I was like, Oh, I get, I get it. <laughs> I just like, sat it down and, and I've, that's gotten me through life. And I, I like when people make references to things that happened in the last half of the book, I'm like, Huh? <laughs> what do you mean rats? What, what are you, you talking room, about? What room 101? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I that's like if you end it halfway through, it's actually kind of a good book. Like <laughs> <laughs> It's actually a good book at the end of the book also. It's just uh not as happy. Mm.
Hey, Adam, you should ask us your question. Oh, sorry. I forgot that I was next and I got distracted by thinking about books. Was it Shakespeare? Yeah. Yeah. That's like the most <laughs> lame thing I've ever heard. I got distracted yeah. by thinking about books. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm working with my therapist on being more present and mindful. And this, this, this podcast is not helping right now. Because I'm thinking about books. Um, anyway. It's funny because I have the exact opposite of problem. Trying to be less mindful? Less uh, thinking about books. <laughs> <laughs> My question. Uh, no transition. No segue. My question is, what non-book item would you like to have a library of? Hmm. Huh. Uh, it's my turn. Um, the answer for me, and maybe many people might not know this, but I would uh, I'd love a library of guitars everywhere. Ooh. So I've been playing guitar for 16 years now. Just I just the one. You've been playing one, just the one, one guitar. guitar for 16 years. Everywhere you go, you're playing that guitar. Just constantly. I'm amazed how you do it while you use the restroom. You know, it it, it was hard at the beginning. I know you're doing it because I hear the sound. Oh, yeah. But <laughs> it's the, the trick is uh, the tighten up the strap so it's a little bit higher up. <laughs> <laughs> tighten up the strap. Yep. That's the trick. <laughs> Just gird it up. Yep. Um, but no, that would be my non uh, li- book related library. Um, I already have like five guitars. Do you? Right hey, now. wait. I got a. I got a question. Let me hear. When you when you when you play the the guitar in the bathroom. <laughs> oh my gosh. When you play, are you, are you in drop D? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. I am. Okay. Because <clears throat> that could mean many things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm done. <laughs> how many how many guitars would you call a library? Because you, you already have five, you said. Yes. How many more is it gonna um, take? Um 20 more. <laughs> That's like a small, nice little country library. Yeah. I don't want to go crazy. I'm not I'm being realistic in my estimate. Okay, so you're you're setting attainable goals, which I think is beyond the scope of this question. I would just want my house to look like a guitar center is what I really want. (laughs) (laughs) But you don't want it to sound like a guitar center. People just wander in and play smoke on the water. (laughs) It's just enter Sandman all the time. (laughs) (laughs) I I I I have like a love hate relationship with Guitar Center or Sam Ash or any of those kind of places. It's almost like you have to wear headphones to go in there. Oh, yeah. Mm. Guitars. How would you... So it's a library of guitars. How would you mount them? Like, because it's a library. Are they just hanging on the wall? Or yeah, are I'd they probably hang them on the shelves? Wall. Or? You can get racks for them, or you hang them up on the wall, or both. If it was an Apple brand rack, would it be an iRack? <sighs> um, those, like, <laughs> ro- those roadie racks, you know what I'm talking about? Like, the yeah. bands have... Yeah, maybe those. Because they're like, those are like bookshelves for guitars. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Yeah, perfect. Would you want Would you want a bunch of amps to go with your guitars? Well, if it's going to look like a guitar center, then yeah. <laughs> like one wall is the... the it's just sh- a book, bunch the, of Marshall the, app. The guitar amps. shelves. And then yeah, the other wall is just stacks and stacks and stacks. <laughs> I wonder what the Dewey decimals, Decimal can label is for amplifiers mm. i don't think it's ever been asked yeah i don't think is that we're, can we're you blazing real, trails here boys can you do real objects in the dewey decimal system is that a thing i don't know did you have to do by the type of guitar or the person who created it mm. Listen, well, this dewey. is fun um <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna rescue this with my less serious answer i would like a library of corn dogs <laughs> can you imagine that I would like to imagine that in the middle, <laughs> there's a font of mustard. <laughs> you just grab yes, one and like, move. like, like in a normal library where you'd have the bank of computers that nobody uses. <laughs> yeah. Instead, it's just like fountains of condiments. Yeah. Mm. You know, like the chocolate fountains. Yeah, yeah. Just condiments. That's exactly what I was picturing, Andrew. <laughs> so instead of instead of um, bookshelves full. So are you thinking bookshelves full of corn dogs? I I'm picturing an a, a library. Take the library that you think of in your head when you think of library, okay. take out all the books, <laughs> replace them with corn dogs. <laughs> replace the the computer bank that nobody uses with fountains of condiments <laughs> and quadruple the bathroom capacity. 
That's it. <laughs> so let me ask you the question. Mm. What's your favorite condiment on a corn dog? Ooh, mustard. Oh yeah, mustard's the right answer. Because you because because the batter's kind of sweet. Yeah. So the mustard is perfect with that. So there's a food truck out here, and all they sell is corn dogs, mm. and they're amazing. But they asked me something when I ordered my corn dog that I've never been asked when ordering a corn dog. Wow. Would you like honey on that? What? And I was like, I would. <laughs> and they put honey, and then they put mustard on it, and it was amazing. It's like it's like uh, easy honey mustard, like. Like <laughs> deconstructed honey mustard. Yeah, it was uh, show title. <laughs> I highly recommend it. Mm, mm. I I'm scared to try that. So it was just regular mustard, like French is yellow. Yeah, with honey. Well, they put the honey on the corn dog. So the corn dog, like, because you can get like corn dog Ooh. batter that has honey in it, but this didn't, and so right. they added the honey. On top of it. So did they dip the corn dog in honey, or they drizzled the honey? They on just top? drizzled the honey on top, and then in the corner they put a bunch of mustard. Huh? Did you did you wait for the honey to soak into the batter? Um, a little bit, because I was also hungry. I'm I'm super fascinated by this. Have you guys ever been to hot dog on a stick? Yes, I have. Oh, I know you have. I've been there with you, Andrew. I know. That's why I, I have. I have not been there. But I'm imagining it's corn dog. Um, it's yeah, it's corn dog. <laughs> corn dogs and funny hats. And it's like high school girls in um awkwardly young girls <laughs> in like uh, in like retro mini skirt um dresses like and then they wear these tall hats like corn dog esque hats <laughs> and the colors of the uniforms are like red, yellow, and blue stripes, right? Yeah, and uh-huh. white. Um. But they have these things where it's a corn dog, but instead of hot dog, it's cheese. It's cheese. It's just a <laughs> corn dog full of melted cheese. It's really good, and it's it's not like um like like uh pepper jack or something. It's American cheese. So it's yeah. like a, a block of melty American cheese surrounded by batter, and it's freaking amazing. Well, you can get pepper jack, but you, you just can. get the cheese. But the pepper jack isn't really like real pepper jack. It still's like the consistency of a oh, like yeah. American cheese. It's super oh processed. Gosh. There's one here in Provo. Dude, I'm, you, you gotta go. It's most definitely <laughs> in the mall, so it's most definitely it in is. The mall. That's exactly where it is, actually. It's funny. Oh, I did I talk about how I had a friend who like who liked a girl who worked it. Wait, was that friend you, Andrew? No, no, no. That wasn't. Why me. did we go to the hot dog and stick? Just cause? I think we went just because, but I think you had a friend yeah. that was super into a girl. Yeah, so I just used to go there to support him. Man, it's hard to remember. So in your in your <laughs> in your corn dog back to my library. In your corn dog library, would you mm-hmm. have corn dog memorabilia or just corn dogs? What's corn dog memorabilia like? Like this was the best corn dog. Like like a hot dog on a stick uniform or just corn dog. I I think just corn dogs. I mean, like, why are we gonna comp- overcomplicate it? Like. Right? Are you talking about like having archival corn dogs? <laughs> you know those like don't archival keep. corn dog recipes. <laughs> like you know those those newspaper racks? <laughs> They're just hanging old corn dogs that are like sealed in plastic. Right. That's <laughs> you go into the special collections and it's just old corn dog sticks. The corn dogs <laughs> <away>. <laughs> with like the library type label stuff on them, you know, like that white paint with the labels written on. Yeah. Did you know there's a National Corn Dog Day? What day is it? I don't know. I'm I... sure the morning show AM will let us know when it's Corn Dog Day. That's why the only reason I listen. Mm. <laughs> that's that's it. <laughs> um, that's my answer. I mean, I I I I don't want to talk about it more because now all I want to do is eat a corn dog. One last thing, because here's the thing. I want I want to say I want to say what I'm picturing, and I want you to tell me if it's a bad idea. Actually, I know you'll tell me that. Um. Don't put words in my mouth. Don't put corn dogs in my mouth. Do put corn dogs in my mouth. <laughs> Don't put words in my mouth. Put corn dogs in my mouth. No words, yes, corn dogs. I can I can follow that. But what I'm picturing <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Freaky Andrew. You can't do that. Turn the middle of the thing. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's my new profile picture. <laughs> also, Corn Dog Day is the nineteenth of this month. <gasps> I know. I can't even. I can't even blaspheme by describing the picture. Like, wait, like wait, 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 picture wait, 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 wait. Corn Dog Day is March nineteenth. Yeah, guys, do you know what March nineteenth also is? 
the day that it's coming. The day, last day of winter? No. Well, it is. Oh, it is. It's also my birthday. <gasps> what? Yeah. Yeah. What? I think I know what we're doing on my birthday. <laughs> corn dog museum? Everybody's getting a corn dog, and we're going to get a golden corn dog shuffle. <laughs> and we're gonna break ground for the corn dog library. I'm learning so much about corn dogs as we talk. <laughs> it might be hunger induced. Mm. Oh my goodness! Where were we going? Sorry, Adam. Oh yeah, I was gonna <laughs> say. Here's what I'm picturing in my mind. Okay. Um, instead of bookshelves, just those um hot rollers that you see in gas stations, just filled with corn dogs. I can get behind that. Mm. Yes or no? No. Um, I like that idea. <laughs> But I just want to keep it pure like a library. <laughs> like it'd be really quiet and solemn. Yeah, I want it. That's because then at that point, what you're talking about, Adam, is a quick trip. <laughs> and and quick trips are awesome. Yeah. That's not it's not the same as a library. It's a different it's a different beast. OK. OK. But I do miss having a quick. Have you guys ever been to a quick trip? Yeah. Good old QT. Yeah. They sell drinks and corn dogs. They, they, it's like it's like your normal. Um, gas station convenience store on crack. I've I've never been. Ooh, you should find one. I don't think there's any near you. They're they're like more the Midwest. Yeah, I'm not mid enough. In in the they had them in St. Louis all over. I know that. When did St. Louis become the Midwest? What's what's St. Louis? The south. It's not the south. It's it's like is the east. I guess it depends where you're from. <sighs> yeah, it's like that. It's but uh, the Mississippi River. Um, Adam. What do you want a library of? Um, I would love a library just of vinyl records. That's a non-book item. Oh, look at you. That must be something that you'd want when you don't already have one. Dang. I don't. I don't already have one. I have like, I probably have 15 records, but you can hardly call that a library. So me and Adam have this ongoing feud of getting the best records possible. We send it to each other. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the one I most recently got. Um... What did I get most recently? I think the one I most recently got was the Scott Pilgrim soundtrack. I think that was my most recent. I have that one. That's a really good one. That is so good. So I, I was. That's like the least vinyl recordy sounding thing to play on a vinyl. It's actually record. really cool, and it comes on a clear red vinyl. Mm-hmm. Hmm. It's it's pretty cool looking. I actually but, think it translates really well to vinyl because it's kind of grungy. Mm -hmm. mm. So I was doing some math the other day about how much money I spent on vinyl. <laughs> never do that math. <laughs> never. It was like never. I could have a out. brand new car right now. Pretty much, but <laughs> I came to a conclusion. That's what I always think every time you post a picture of your new vinyl. I'm like, mm, all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the best use of like yeah. of my money, but I only get one like one. A month or so. Yeah, but that's like thirty dollars a month. <laughs> no, I try and only spend twenty. That's still a lot of money. Yeah, I know it is. You know how much I pay for music a month? Uh, how much? Nine dollars. Well, not all of us can pirate it, Aaron. It's not pirated. <laughs> I iTunes music, Apple music. Just because it's from Russia doesn't mean it's not pirated. No, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my actually my my music purchases have fallen off greatly since I started paying for Spotify. That kind of makes me sad. Doesn't make me sad at all. Well, just I actually haven't bought any new records since it was my birthday last month, and that's the last time I bought records. And what's the last record you got? Um, I bought. Oh, I bought the soundtrack to High Fidelity mm -hmm. on vinyl. Okay. What's your favorite record? Oh, don't do that. <laughs> um, it depends on the mood I'm in. I can tell you my favorite record back when I used to listen to records. Let's hear it. It was Bill Cosby himself. <laughs> oh, dude, I have that one. That's a funny one. I, I think Zach has that one too, and it's so it's on my shelf. Hey. Um, um, my favorite is either London Calling or Nirvana Unplugged. Mm. I love um because I have the XX. Their their first album, mm -hmm. I love that. I love that so much. On the, I think it's I think it's on the B side. That's a weird way to pronounce Ets Essex. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we need to move on. <laughs> so on the I think it's Stop on the side. Sending these freaking things in this freaking robot. <laughs> I'm so Stop. sorry. I just I just searched corn dogs. I'm just going through images. There's so many. 
Um, hey, since we're doing a book episode, mm. aka the worst idea for an episode ever. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so guys, if you were a writer, yeah, what, yeah. What, what would your pen name be? Hey, good question. Good question. <laughs> I'm just I'm I hate people who always answer questions with that. That's a good question. Like yeah. because th- people say it so often, there's no way they're being honest. Yeah. That's a good comment. Unless I think all questions are good questions. That's that's a good answer. That's what we should start doing. When, when someone asks you a question, you're like, I have a good answer. Or, or after they give the answer, you say, that was a good answer. Sounds good to me. <laughs> that was a good joke, Aaron. Everybody, everybody get on my page here. Everybody, let's join this. My, It's a good page. My, my pen name... <laughs> my pen name would be Samuel Langhorn Clemens. That's a good answer. <laughs> Yeah. Um, can I, I ask you a question? Right. Yeah. Why? Because I know why. Samuel Langhorn Clemens had a pen name and it was Mark Twain. <laughs> okay. And so since Samuel Langhorn Clemens isn't being used, <laughs> I think it's an amazing name. And I'm going to take it. Well, I mean, it's like that Oscar Wilde quote, you know, be yourself. Everybody else is taken. Well, that's, that's the mistake Samuel not, Langhorn Clemens made. Not this. <laughs> he already had a great name, and he took and he didn't use it. So you know what? I'm taking it, Samuel Langhorn Clemens. I'm gonna write about the like jumping frogs and and kids rafting down rivers with slaves, and I'm gonna, and people. Uh, Are you well, going to re-release Mark Twain's book under <laughs> Samuel uh, Langhorne Clemens? Yeah, I'm going to basically just take all of his books. <laughs> Actually, I think you can do that. They're in the public domain now. Right. So. I'm going to I'm going to publish them under Samuel Langhorne Clemens. You should also name it something differently, though. And there's going to be some ki- <laughs> right, right, right. So like, uh, instead of a kid in King Arthur's court, it's going to be like whippersnapper camelot or something like that. I don't know. It's just off the top of my head. But then I'm going to publish these books in places. Where like really impoverished third world countries, and I'm gonna like airdrop the books so that they have no reference point. Theoretically, you know, they're just gonna burn them. Like, for they, heat, don't, right? they don't. They <laughs> don't. They don't have the internet. But there's gonna be some child who treasures this book by Samuel Langhorne Clemens. <laughs> He's, he's going to treasure this book. He's like, this book taught me to read. And then he's going to finally like go to school and he's going to be telling his friends about this book. And they're going to be like, oh, yeah, you know, by Mark Twain, right? Like, no. No, Samuel Langhorne Clemens. Samuel Langhorne, the whippersnapper and with, with the king. Camelot Whip, whippersnapper. Whippersnapping. You're just trying to make people's lives harder is what you're saying. I just like, I just like the idea of a, of a, of a more wacky world. Uh, okay. It just makes me happy to think that little things like this, little little pockets of an alternate reality exist within our world. Like the Bernstein Bears. <laughs> like I want to basically create the confusion so that some podcast in the future they can talk about, wait, wasn't it Mark Twain? I swear it was Mark Twain. And everyone's like, no, it's always been Samuel Langhorne Clemens. <gasps> oh my gosh, I'm going to go and I'm going to buy out every publisher <laughs> And make them change the name to Samuel Langhorne Clemens. And then I'm going to buy out every encyclopedia and change Wikipedia so that it's switched. <laughs> this is my plan. Wait, the question is, what would be your pen name? Yeah. I'm sorry. I think I got carried away. You might have gotten a little excited. You ventured a little into 1984 territory, and you would have known that if you had read the book. I only got halfway. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was yeah. that was a beautiful fiction that you created for us. Though. Thank you. This is the oh. world that lives inside my. See, uh, a lot of people look at me, and they like a lot of times people will ask me, "What do you? What's on your mind?" Or like, "What are you thinking about?" Because I like make this face <laughs> with like a raised eyebrow. Like my default face is a quizzical, ponderous face. It's not like a normal, relaxed face because you're questioning you have, everything. You've got- You've got, <laughs> you've got resting query face. <laughs> yeah. And and um uh that's because this is how my mind works. Like I just verbalized what's going on in my head. Like I'm thinking of this kind of stuff while other people are talking, while things are going on. I'm daydreaming about these uh plots. So Oh, it's mm-hmm. like when people ask you, Hey, uh, what what you thinking about? And you're like, Oh, nothing. Yeah. Like they should they should just accept that answer because <laughs> The other yeah. option is listening to the podcast. <laughs> they don't want to hear it. Just listen to the podcast. 
Adam, what's your answer? My answer, so my middle name is Reese, and I love... It better be Ronald McDonald. <laughs> I'm not gonna... Damn. I don't know how you got that from Reese. I was, uh, really, I was really hoping in my mind, I was thinking of you as Ronald McDonald. <laughs> writing a book. Is it going to be Rolls Reese? No. It's not. <laughs> like Rolls Royce? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. I was thinking I could, I, I like the and name a picture of fa- A picture of you eating, like shoving Swiss rolls in your mouth. That's like your author p- picture in the back. Is it Reese's Pieces? Is that your pen name? <laughs> Okay, Reese's cup. Reese's monkey. <laughs> yes. Is it? Is it? Yay! It's Reese's. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was rough. Is Aaron. it? I'm sorry. Is it recessive gene? <laughs> Do not re- resuscitate. <laughs> uh, I rescind my comments. <laughs> are, we, are we just trying to kill Aaron right now? <laughs> trying to kill Adam with puns? Yeah, we're punishing him. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm sorry. I, I, I hope you've re- received this well. I have... I have, I have <laughs> you know your answer is going to be terrible now, right? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter what you say. I have receded into Marsha. Into mm. So what's your what's your pen name? <laughs> um, so I was thinking I could write children's books under the name Reese Rocket because I like the alliteration <laughs> and I like rockets. <laughs> <laughs> mm, um, okay. That would have been a lot funnier if you hadn't guys hadn't done that, but I'm glad that you did. <laughs> Reese Rocket. <laughs> Reese Rocket. Um, I don't know how to break this to you. <laughs> There's no e at the end. It doesn't sound appropriate for children. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to Google it right now, and I'm probably, now that I think about it, I'm probably going to get something really terrible. Oh, well, yeah, that's what, that's what I was thinking. Like, you got to respect. Here's a Wikipedia page about a guy named Eberhard Reese. So, you know what? New answer. Eberhard Reese. <laughs> <laughs> Eberhard <laughs> Reese Rocket? There's a Reese High School, and they're the Reese Rockets. Hmm. Maybe it's rocket, like a uh, like arugula. They call it rocket. I don't, I don't. Isn't it rocket? Rocket? They call it rocket. Is it? But they spell it rocket. Oh. But I'm pretty sure the French name is not rocket for the herb. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? No, am I, no, am I, I have no I'm, idea. Sorry, what I'm losing about. my mind. So, you know, arugula. It is the vegetable. Yeah. Okay. Arugula is a peppery herb salad kind of green. Well. In England, they call it rocket, but I'm pretty sure that's just an anglicized version of the French, who I think call it roquette. You remember how we were worried about this show being too boring? <laughs> <laughs> Eberhard Reese Rocket. Still not a good name. <laughs> I, I just, I had no chance after. <laughs> I know, I like, I shouldn't have gone first. I'm sorry. No, it was, it was great. <laughs> sorry. Was sorry for being funny. No, that's, I'm not asking you to apologize for that. Did you Andrew. not hear my peals of laughter? <laughs> no, they're like death cackles. Like you were, <laughs> you, were, you were falling away to madness. Yeah, I, I, it, was, it was pretty recent, so I remember. <sighs> Andrew. <laughs> okay, so my pen name this is actually no a person. Respect. This is actual human being that I met, and I'm mm. going to steal his name for my book. Wow. His name is... Akahai Lazarus. What? <laughs> that is incredible. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I heard like the teacher say his name and my ears perked up immediately. Like, what? Is that a person? I must know this man. Oh my goodness. Uh, in the show notes, check show notes. Did I spell it right? Is that what we're looking well, at? Well, here's here? the thing. I don't know if I want to give the right spelling just in case someone like looks him up on Facebook or something like that. But, <laughs> well, that's but, what I'm doing right now. Okay. <laughs> Akahai Lazarus. Where does that name come from? I don't know because he's super white. <laughs> that is not the picture that I got when you said Akahai Lazarus. Uh, right? <laughs> yeah, like there this is a white person named Akahai. But he is from Hawaii. Well, then he's Hawaiian, obvi. Um I'm looking at pictures of him. He's Hawaiian. Or he's some sort of Asian Polynesian. Does he listen to the show? No. Okay. Well, I don't know, actually. 
Better not say. He looks like someone who should listen to this show. Well, you say that about most people. Well, now uh, there's a picture of him with a sombrero, and I'm confused. See? <laughs> this is the, this is the problem. No, he's got to be some sort of with a name like that. That's like a Polynesian name, totally. Now I'm just going through all of his Facebook pictures. Hi, Aka. Hi. 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 Are you wait wait? What pictures are you looking at? Because there's no pictures of him with a sombrero. Hi, Aka. Hi. Yes, there are. Oh, that picture of him with his sombrero is not him. That's his roommate. Oh, that's Danny Gutierrez. Yeah. Let me just name all of your friends on Facebook right now. <laughs> Danny's pretty awesome, though. He's There's just... Jose Gomez Rome. Mm-hmm. He's friends with you and Andrew Raleigh. Because mm-hmm, Andrew Raleigh lives behind me. He lives behind you. Yeah, he lives. I could throw a stone at his window. Mm. Wait a second. Are all of his pictures pictures of his friend? It seems that way. They're all pictures. Okay, so this is. <laughs> they're all pictures of Danny Gutierrez. Yeah. With Akahai Lazarus. So Akahai Lazarus, now I'm finding pictures of him. Akahai Lazarus is a mystery. He's super white. That's what I said. Like, I'm like, I was like, maybe you saw something I didn't see, but I'm like, no. He's super Holly. 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 Well, okay. Anyway. You sure like, yeah, well, I'm leaving this all in. Okay, thanks. Um, <laughs> Leaving it all in. Akahai Lazarus. Wow. Lazarus is an interesting last name. I've, right? never, I've never seen that as a surname. Like, well, I mean, one person gets that surname, it'll never die. Burr, burr, burr. Okay, you know what? Because women will be like, I need that name. <laughs> thank, thank you, Aaron. I need. I, I really needed that today. Yeah, <laughs> it's a, a pity bell. I've been trying this whole time to get the bell. <laughs> been trying so hard. <laughs> uh, Eberhart Reese Rocket has been trying so hard. Thanks for listening. Remember, your ratings fuel us, so please rate and share the show wherever you listen to it. You can subscribe to receive new episodes the moment they're released by going to 3g3q.co slash subscribe. A big thank you to our sponsors on patreon.com. Sign up to get access to exclusive stuff like unreleased episodes, deleted scenes, haikus, and much more. Especially Adam saying terrible things. Mmm... We'd also love to hear from you. So where can people get a hold of y'all? Um, I'm on Twitter, A underscore Sav. I'm also on Peach if you want to look me up on there. I think it's also A underscore Sav. You're doing, you're doing great on Peach. Adam, mm, <laughs> he just posts an echo every three days. So. <laughs> every three days, and it's like something like ridiculous. Yeah. It's, it's lazy existentialism. It's like it no context for it. <laughs> A- Adam, where can people get a hold of your lazy um, existentialism? I'm, <laughs> I'm slowly becoming famous on Twitter at that Adam kid, and if you want uh, some you lazy existentialism, <laughs> I can and I did. You're gonna lose followers on Twitter now. <laughs> I do every day. <laughs> um, <laughs> Me too. If you want some lazy existentialism, I'm on Peach at uh, Rad at, Adam. At, at Leaves of Grass. No, that's Rad Adam. Oh. Leaves of Grass is very non-lazy existentialism. It's different. Well, it's different. All right, well, I'm on Twitter and everywhere on the internet at Aaron L.M. Goodwin. So find me. Connect with me. Give me all of your plus K. Uh, It's a clout joke. Oh. Well, other than that, goodbye. I want you to remember that you only really need to read the first half of any given book. I want you to remember to get out and vote to change the Library of Congress into the Library of Corn Dogs. <laughs> I'm gonna stick it. I don't care. I'm leaving it there. Stick with it. Get it. I'm gonna stick with that one. Get it. Get it. Uh, Is that joke too corny? You're really oh. reaching. Oh, don't batter me up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. I want you to remember that the name Akahai Lazarus is already taken. <laughs> For some reason. For some strange some reason. reason. And it's not by a fictional alien. <laughs> Other than that, it's not by a fictional alien. Other than that, I want you to remember to question your sanity, to question the nature of the universe and matter, to question the ultimate corn dog condiment, and also everything.
can't focus, Maine. Anyway, I think it's on the flip side that the song Future, I love that song. And I love, I don't know, there's something a little bit special about listening to it on vinyl because about halfway through the halfway through the song, like this bass just kicks in and you can just feel it. It's great. I do have um, an album by Spoon where the last song will loop indefinitely forever. Oh, that's awesome. So once you get to the end of the record, it'll just keep looping. Like they cut out the part of it. So it'll just play like three seconds over and over again. Yeah. What's, uh, what's Jack White's latest album? Is it Lazaretto? That's the latest one. Yeah. Yeah. I, I kind of wanted to get that. Um, cause there's a bunch of cool, like little vinyl things that he does on it. Like there's this little hologram of like, I think like a spin, like a, like a, like a, like a ballerina spinning around or whatever in the middle that they just did. I don't know. They, they like put dots on the record somehow. They like laser engraved it. So it looks like if you look at it from the right angle, you see like this person dancing. Um, mm. And then they, they did this thing on the first track where, where, where you put the needle to changes the intro to the first track, which is really neat. Um, but then I listened to the album. I yes. listened to it before I bought it and it kind of sucks. So I didn't buy it. <laughs> yeah, it's just all right. Anyway, we should probably talk about something else more interesting. You, you mean you people don't it? care about my music tastes? <sighs> Sorry, it's a real big yawn there. Um, <laughs> cut that, I, imagine cut that I imagine my answer will be cut down to me. I would like down to I would like a library full of vinyl, and then Aaron yawn. <laughs> Next question. I probably will do that. Um, <laughs> uh, 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 another question. It's my turn. This show is so boring. We're only. We, it feels like we've been recording for eight hours, <laughs> thirty minutes. We're already at the last question. Usually by this time we've been recording for fifty minutes. We should start now by apologizing. <sighs> um, sorry, I like stuff, guys. Yeah, you should feel sorry. Now that's the thing you need to apologize for. Sorry, I like analog sound. Anyway, Actually, sound, is, sound is always analog. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, let me. Um, Unless you're a robot, I guess. Let, let, let me answer this question by yeah. asking it. 